What's up guys, Nozu for you here with a little clan action, a little gearing action, and the enemy team decided to send all their ships towards me, and I was more than happy to send all my torpedoes towards them. So I racked up about 170,000 damage. Every single salvo I fired seemed to find their target and hit at least one ship. It was just a great round. Anyhow, be sure to like and subscribe for more ships and news and everything else. We're going to get into our main topic of today, and that's going to be crates, loot crates, containers, all that. So before I dive into this, I'm just going to warn you, this is a very controversial topic. I understand people have very differing opinions on this, so just keep an open mind with this and know that even if you disagree with me, that's perfectly cool. I might disagree with you, but you know what? That's cool as well. I don't mind. That's all right. We're all in this together, so no big deal. Every time Wargaming does a container sale, such as with the Santa boxes, inevitably one large controversy always crops up. Is it gambling? This really wasn't a huge issue in the past, but with the EU working to stomp on what they call crate gambling, it has indeed become a very legitimate issue. To that point, Blizzard has stopped selling Overwatch crates in the EU as a result of pending litigation. It's understandable but it's also unwarranted. It's understandable because we want to protect our children, and also we want to protect at-risk individuals who are prone to gambling. We all know there's a rush when you open containers, crates, loot boxes, or whatever you want to call them. You get a burst of endorphins. It's enjoyable. It's a high. It's unwarranted because I never viewed Overwatch's crates as a gamble. You know you're getting skins, emotes, and voice lines. You're paying for random items. That's all. That's it. And this is what Wargaming's crates have always been, for the most part. How did we get here, though? And why is this such a big issue? There are a couple reasons. The first strike was when popular YouTube and Twitch personalities were running their own loot drop sites for games like Counter-Strike. Kids were dropping thousands of dollars in hopes of ultra-rare gun skins. All this was perpetuated by the fact that CSGO and other games have a lucrative market for these items. Players were essentially gambling in hopes of receiving an item they could turn around and sell for a lot of money. Keep in mind Wargaming, and for that matter Overwatch, does not have a market like that. There is no secondary market to sell your items. That was strike one though. The second stripe was EA and their crate drops, which gave buyers certain attributes that provided a clear advantage that non-crate buyers could not receive. This was true pay-to-win at its worst. It hurt EA badly and revived the whole crate drop drama. And now here we are. Europe, as always, wants to regulate. And Wargaming, as always, is selling containers. And players, once again, at least a few, are reviving the gambling argument. First off, my thoughts on protecting the children. Yeah, what about the children? Well, my thoughts are simple. Be a good parent. Protect your credit card accounts. I know that's easier said than done, but seriously, do your due diligence as a parent. Now, my thoughts on the whole gambling aspect. As I already stated, you're pretty much paying for randomized items. The value of these items is defined by the player receiving them alone. Sometimes the value might be less than one deems they paid for. Sometimes it might be more. But, the same goes for much of the things we purchase in life. The same thing can be said for going to the movies. You pay for a ticket. The movie is either worth your time, or it's a waste of your time. There's no guarantee that you get your money's worth. Same exact principle. And I'm sure that anyone that went and saw Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull can attest to that. That was a gamble, and you lost your money on it. But of course... We're not going to regulate movies, are we? Actually, you want to know what loot crates and containers and all these things are kind of like? When I was a little kid, I used to collect baseball cards. Baseball cards could be considered gambling if we're going off of calling loot crates gambling. And the reason why is you don't know what you're getting in a pack of baseball cards. And now you've got chase cards, you've got autographs. You've got game-worn material jam-packed into these baseball card packs and these sport card packs. And you know what? Kids go after them. Kids buy packs of these cards hoping they're going to get them. 
They hope that they're going to get that Bryce Harper Game Warden autograph jersey baseball card and a pack of cards. And you know what? They might not get it. They might not get their money's worth back. Because, well, I guess under the EU's terms, that's gambling. So what are we going to do? Are we going to get rid of sports cards as well? Because that's definitely more of a gamble than loot crates. There's no guarantee that you're going to get a good player whatsoever in a pack of baseball cards. Once again, you are paying money for goods that are random. Still, everything we do in life can be considered a gamble. From asking a guy or girl on a date to asking for a pay raise. Sometimes money's involved. Sometimes it's not. I personally have no issue whatsoever with loot crates and containers. I spend lots of money on them. And for the most part, I've been happy with the results. I've never looked at it as a gamble. It has always been a transaction for goods. I might not know what the goods are, but I know I'm getting something. Wargaming's crates are even more innocuous than others. They offer you nothing that you can't get anywhere else somehow. Sure, yeah, you can argue that the Missouri's in crates now and it's not available for sale, but it was offered at one point in the past for everyone to get. Everyone had a chance to get the Missouri before it was yanked. Other ships you can outright purchase right now. Same deal with them though. Everything in Wargaming's stock has an equal opportunity to purchase it, whether through steel, free XP, coal, or by cold hard cash. No player is told that, hey, unless you pay for these crates, unless you try and get a random ship in these crates, you have no other chance of getting this ship. That's what pay to win is. This is not pay to win though. This is everybody has an opportunity and you just choose not to pay to get the ship. Everybody has an equal chance. So where's the issue? If you pay me for a service, you'd be gambling that I can actually perform said service. Again, how are loot crates any different? The only reason they're an issue now is because of the shady actions of a few companies and a few individuals that were offering them. Whether it be the shysters that ran the gambling sites or companies that truly made crates pay to win. So here's the solution for the EU and others that want to regulate these loot crates or containers or again, whatever you want to call them. Instead of punishing every company and the responsible players that actually enjoy these crates, why not just let the free market regulate? EA took a large enough hit when players decided the practice was shady. So much so that EA changed course and righted things. Only regulate and intercede if it's deemed to be truly gambling. To do that though, you'll need to define what gambling exactly is when it pertains to these crates. Is it gambling only if loot crates are opening up a complete black market where players can sell stuff? I don't know. That's something that has to be defined. I'd say that's a little closer to hitting the nail on the head than punishing a company like Wargaming or Blizzard where you just receive bonuses that are only good for the purchaser. Especially when the items can be unlocked or bought through other means. Alas, this argument will continue. Even if the EU relents, there will always be gamers that disagree with the practice. And that's fine. I respect that. I respect your choice and your principles. If you feel it's gambling, don't purchase the crates. But again, don't knock the players that decide they want to purchase them because obviously they see some tangible value in these crates, in these loot boxes. And they have no issue giving their money to get them. But just remember, Everything we do in life is a gamble. Some of it brings you joy. Some of it doesn't. The only thing I can tell you, as the buyer, be wise with your money. Make an informed decision and go from there. Don't spend more than you're willing to lose with crates or anything else. Regardless, I want to know what you feel about loot crates, containers, and all the above. Do you think it is straight up gambling? Or do you just think it's buying goods that you don't know what the actual goods are? Do you think you're just paying for something? A mystery item. I mean, when I go out and purchase a Funko mystery pop item, I don't know what I'm getting inside. I'm essentially gambling on getting a hard to find rare chase item. Whether it's a Rick and Morty Funko pop mystery box, 
where I got a evil Morty recently. The odds of that were 1 in 42. Or you get some piece of crap that you get every single other box. It's all gambling. So again, where do you draw the line? What do you feel true gambling is? I want to know your thoughts. Let me know. Put your thoughts in the comments. And aside from that, you all have a wonderful, wonderful week, wonderful month, wonderful holiday season. I'll catch you all later. Zoop out.